I'm going to do the assessment. I
morning and welcome to our service here in Ridgecrest, California in the high desert. Welcome to those of you who are worshiping online with us as well. Uh, several announcements. Uh, first, I want to cover and then I don't know if Amy wants to add any. There is a Thanksgiving meal here in the social hall at 1 p.m. on Thursday. Amy, do you want to add anything more? Yes, if you would like to RSVP for that, you can just find me after church. Dine in or take out a donation only, and you're welcome to bring that donation on Thanksgiving Day. Thanks, Amy, for doing that. Also note that uh, the schedule for the office. Tara's going to be out of the office tomorrow. I will be in the office, even though the office will be closed. I'll be here, and I'll be closed on Thursday and Friday for the Thanksgiving uh, holiday as well. See the announcement about paint night coming up in a few weeks. And then we have the insert that gives you the, uh, the first look at our Advent and Christmas season worship and activities. So you can see some of the activities that will happen after worship on the Sundays during Advent. And then also note that Christmas Eve is a Sunday, so in the morning for the 9.30 service on Christmas Eve the 24th, that's gonna be an early Christmas service, like early, early Christmas Eve service. Um, and then in the evening will be the candlelight service at 7 p.m. So, and then you can read the other announcements that are there as well. So. Um, I'll invite Melanie up for a call to worship. Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. Good morning all to this fine fall service day. We now have our uh, worship, call to worship. Uh, it will be in the red in the notice email or on the screen. It's the Psalm 41 through 11, page 774, if you're following in the red. Um, and if you would please stand with your aid. I wait patient, waited patiently for the Lord, who inclined to me and heard my cry. The Lord put a new song in my mouth, a song of praise to our God. Many will see and be in awe, and put their trust in the Lord. Blessed are those who make the Lord their trust, who do not turn to the proud, to those who go astray after false gods. O Lord, my God, you have multiplied your wonderful deeds and your thoughts towards us. None can compare with you. Were I to proclaim and tell of them, they would be more than can be numbered. Sacrifice and offering be beyond desire, but you have given me. Burnt offering and sin offering you have not required. Then I said, I come the I to do your will, O my God, your law is in my heart. I have told the glad news of deliverance in the great congregation. not hid your saving help within my heart. I have spoken of your faithfulness and your salvation. I have not concealed your steadfast love and faithfulness from your great congregation. O Lord, do not withhold your mercy from me. Let your steadfast love and faithfulness ever preserve me. May the Lord of his blessings be with you. We now have our hymn, Open the Eyes of My Heart. <clears throat> Thank you. 
This morning is a, a little different in terms of the message time. We kind of we're calling it faith sharing. We have uh, the Victoria and Carolyn pillars uh, here, and you know, in the letters that Paul wrote to the different churches, um, he always had an introduction of some type. Sometimes the introduction was very short, and he got right to what he wanted to talk about. But one of the common themes, and you can find this particularly in um, Ephesians and Colossians and also Philemon, he writes very simple words. I have heard of your faith in the Lord Jesus and your love toward all the saints, and for this reason I do not cease to give thanks for you as I remember you in my prayers. And in Philemon, I pray that the sharing of your faith may become effective and you perceive all the good that we or you, depending on the translation and Philemon, may do for Christ. And so when we give a sharing, then that's an opportunity to do good for Christ. Those of you that were here in these past few weeks know that we did a sermon series on um, five aspects of aiming for discipleship, and one of those was witness. And so this is one style, one particular type of witness, and so uh, I'm going to give an opportunity for Victoria and Carolyn here to, to share, and we're just going to take turns, and this is kind of like the, uh, you know, the late night show interview portion, except it's early Sunday morning, <laughs> that aspect, so. Um, so let me just ask, you can decide who wants to go first, which, what have you been doing these past few years? Tell us something about yourself, and what's been going on. Who you are first, yeah, introduce yourself. So I'm Caroline Pillars. I've been going to this church ever since I can remember. Um, after I graduated high school, I went off to the United States Naval Academy for a uh, plebe summer, which is basically just like six weeks of Navy boot camp. Um, slightly different, but pretty much the same. And then we have plebe year, which is like your freshman year, where um, you have to call all the upperclassmen, sir and ma'am, just like in the real military. Um, and then after that, you get to be an upperclassman and you're there to train the plebes. Um, and it's Similar to a normal college, like you're learning, studying, so I'm right now studying to become a mechanical engineering major. Um, and then towards the end of your four years, so actually last week, you find out what job you get to do in the Navy. So I found out I'll get to be a Navy pilot after I graduate, which is very exciting. <laughs> yeah, one cool thing the Academy does is they let you go home early for Thanksgiving if you promise to talk about them and share your story a little bit, so. <laughs> You're on? And I wrote Victoria into it with me. Thanks <laughs> <laughs> up by the way. Um, my name is Victoria Pillars. I've also been going to this church as long as I can remember. 
So unlike Caroline, I did not go to the military academy after high school. I decided to go to UC Berkeley and I was studying genetics. However, some physical and mental health concerns got in the way. So the past few years, I've been working to heal from those, going in and out of hospitals. And now I'm at Saracoso and taking a few classes, getting better. And graduation, you're going to be graduating in the spring. And then what do you do after that? Where do you go? Do you know? Um, I'm not, we don't know for sure yet, so I'm also applying to go to graduate school, so it depends on some of that, but after that I'll go to Pensacola for flight school, and then after that off to the fleet. Um, after Syracuse, I'm hoping to go back to Berkeley, and I'll be studying clinical laboratory science, and hoping to work in the lab running like blood tests and things like that for hospitals. Awesome. So, actually, Victoria graduated a year before, and you graduated the following year, so 19 and 20. And of course, with COVID this last few years, that's kind of changed the way college and life has been. Can you speak anything about how life might have been or any particular aspect of during college related to that? Um, so, for the academy, COVID was made it pretty different than it usually is. So like when we first got there, we had to stay in our rooms for about two weeks to make sure that nobody, because everybody comes from different places, that nobody had COVID. And then for um, my freshman year, a lot of classes were online from our rooms and we didn't really get to leave campus at all. Um, but it was a good time to like bond with our classmates a lot and we hung out late nights, just chatting with each other, seeing like where people come from and things like that. Um, yeah. Um, when COVID first started, I was still at Berkeley, and it was definitely um, a lot different because they didn't know how to teach online at that time. So all the professors were trying to figure it out, all the students were like, what's happening? And then they eventually like sent everyone home, because I was in the dorms, and they sent everyone home, so they did classes online for like a year and a half, I believe. And then, yeah, it was isolating but it was nice to have like roommates and then when I went home and family so it wasn't so lonely. So what about um, church, chapel, um, any other type of parish church organization that did like Bible studies or any other type of groups like that at, at the colleges? Were there any of those activities that you were able to involve yourself with and can you tell us about that? Yeah, so at the academy we call them ECAs, extracurricular activities. Um, so there's a few different Christian ECAs on campus. Um, the one I end up getting connected with is called Crew. Um, it's basically just like an interdenominational group. Um, we meet on Tuesdays and Thursdays. Tuesdays they'll do like a message and then fellowship afterwards. And then on Thursdays we'll have Bible studies. Um, Plebe year that was pretty hard to get involved with because of COVID and everything was online. So I didn't really start going until youngster year. Um, and then we have a chapel on campus that we go to, but once you get older, you can go off campus for a church. So I've been going to a church called South Shore for the past few years, and that's been super cool. Um, but crew has really been like a good place for me to find like best friends, people that I know I'm gonna be lifelong friends with, and just people to like live life with and share faith with. Um. Berkeley also has crews, so when I went to Berkeley, um, I was involved in crew. We met for worship and talking about scriptures once a week, and then we had like activities. Um, and now that I'm home at Saracoso, I've been going to, there's a Thursday Bible study, and so I've been doing that. Was there any particular moment or incident or experience, either through crew or something else, in which you really felt God's presence or you felt closest to Christ? Um, for me, like when Victoria was in and out of the hospital, that was like really tough for me. Um, and that's actually where my faith grew a lot. So having friends and crew that just kept encouraging me 
to go to crew and like hearing the messages, like the gospel and how God was always there for me no matter what we were going through. Like I'd say that's probably like when I was the most grateful and the closest to God. I'm not sure it's through like a particular organization, but one of the times that I felt closest to God was um, I was taken to the ER at one point, and there was like 12 different ERs in the city. And it happened to be that the hospital I was at, they had a specialized program to help me, and that I was taken to the hospital, that just had to be God's work. And I think in that moment, I was like, thank you. But that lined up right at that time. Yeah, I think it was that. It's Thanksgiving week. Anything that you're thankful for over these last few years that you haven't already mentioned in particular? The opportunity to like get to be home and everybody to be together for Thanksgiving this year is definitely something I'm very thankful for. I'm also thankful to be home this year with my family, and I'm also thankful for this one. <laughs> you spoke a little about some of the challenges of COVID. Were there any other types of challenges or a period where it was like, you know, you just felt your faith tested or anything you want to add about that? Um, I also got to spend a semester at the Coast Guard Academy. We do like an academy exchange program. And right about like the first few weeks I was there, we had just found out that my mom had been diagnosed with breast cancer. And that was really hard because I didn't know anybody yet. And I was like, God, why is all this happening? Um, but at Coast Guard, they had a group called Officers Christian Fellowship, and I got to connect with a bunch of people there and just have my faith encouraged and be reminded that no matter what I was going through, that God was always there, so. Um, for me, I guess it was all of the different hospitals, like the different treatments, and I think just knowing that the only way I was gonna get through it was with God and that he had a plan um, I think. Was there anybody that was like a good role model or just an example for you, even if it was just like, you know, a one incident type thing that lasted just a few minutes, or somebody that over the course of, you know, the weeks, years, or even now, that really represented, you know, oh, this is really a, a Christian witness and a role model. Anybody like that? And it could be multiple. So. Um, I have a friend at the Academy named Hope, which is a very fitting name for this gal because she's just, she really shares the joy of God in her and um, she shared her testimony with us at Crew one night and she talked about all this hardship that she had been through in her life, but she was just so full of joy and light in Christ and she was so excited for like when we get to meet him in heaven and I was just like, I want to have that joy in my life. I want to be like that girl. Like it was just very encouraging to see that no matter what she was going through, she was just so full of joy. I think that um, someone for me would be Miss Amy Achoa. Um, I've gotten to get closer to her through our Thursday groups and just seeing like whatever God puts on her heart or someone who he throws into her life. She's just so willing to help them and do his will and just like, this is going to be hard, but I'm going to do it anyways because this is what he wants. I think that's just a great role model example for myself. Any surprises over the last few years that were just like surprises in your life? Wow, that, that can only be you, God. I think just the fact that I ended up at the academy. Um, when I first like decided to apply for the academy, it was actually because I had a friend who had done a summer program, it was actually Renee. Um, and I was like, well, that sounds kind of cool, I'll apply. And then I got in and I was very upset because I was like, this is free college, my parents are gonna make me go. And they were like, they did not make me go, but I was like, I don't know if I wanna be in the military. But at some point it just clicked and I was like, I want to go. And now seeing how God has like moved in my life through the Naval Academy and the Coast Guard Academy, it's just like, it was definitely his will that I ended up there for sure. Um, I think that just like in general, like the journey I've taken is God's will because there's no way that I could have planned all of this. And I think that my life is an example. 
any particular scriptures or books or songs or maybe it was a, a lecture or a talk or something that you heard in the last few years that really stood out and you're like, oh yeah, that, that made an impact on me. Anything like that stand out? Um, so one of the things we get to do with Naval Academy is over the summers we go on summer trainings and it would be like you spend a month on a ship or um, with the Marine Corps detachment or something like that. And so after my sophomore year, I was on a ship and we had time in port. So I found a church to go to on the weekend. Um, and the message that they spoke about was about how prayer has the power to move mountains. Um, but the pastor said, like, what happens if the mountain doesn't move? And I was like, yeah, because I feel like I'm staring at a mountain right now and it's not moving. And he said, well, maybe God wants you to climb the mountain. And that just really like put everything into perspective for me. Like maybe all the things I was going through in my life was God giving me an opportunity to see how he was going to help me climb that mountain and get closer to him. I think that a verse from Psalm chapter 94 verses 18 through 19 has really stuck with me and helped me write these past few years. It's what I said my foot is slipping, your unfailing love, Lord, supported me. When anxiety was great within me, your consolation brought me joy. And I think that's just really helped me because whatever I felt like I was struggling, I'm like, God's got me. So, graduation down the road for both of you, jobs down the road. Where would you hope that, say, in five years, not just your job life, but maybe your faith life would be in five years. Just, I'm just keep throwing out the number five. You can pick 10, you can pick 30 or 40, up to you. Um, <laughs> um, I think for me, just that I would keep having people put in my life who help me grow closer to God um, and keep me like, it's a lot easier to be going to church and growing in faith when you're also in community. So just that I'd be able to keep finding community no matter where I end up, because that's always a big question mark. Where is the military going to take you next? I think for me, I hope that I continue to grow in my faith with God and have the ability to just trust Him and be like, I can help this person or I can do these things because you want me to and I'll be like, but I have this assignment to do or I have this other thing to be like, in this moment, God wants me to do this and trust him fully. Amen. Anything else that you think, God, I really want to share this with this particular group. I know you're going to be speaking to other groups. You may have a speaking engagement at 11 this morning um, on base. So. Unfortunately, Carolyn won't be able to stay around uh, long. Um, but anything either of you want to say to, to this, this congregation or anything to wrap up or sum up? Um, I think, yeah, one of the big things was the academy wanted us to come home and like share about the academy and give people opportunities to learn about it. So if anybody knows anybody who might be interested in coming to the academy, I'd definitely be happy to talk to you about it. Um, I have a few things I can hand out that have like resources to get connected and um, like applications and stuff like that. But the biggest thing is just like, I don't know, seeing how God can move in your life in unexpected ways, I think has been one of my biggest takeaways from the academy. They, we talk about leadership and all this stuff about going into the military, but just seeing how God has moved in everybody's lives in so many different ways there has been awesome. Um, I think that one final remark that I want to share is that sometimes the road can be bumpy, but it can help you grow in trusting the Lord, and that even if like you have a time of doubt, then He'll always be there when you come back to Him. Amen. Well, I want to pray for you, but I have one last question just for Caroline. What are you doing in the afternoon of summer night? Hopefully being an army. <laughs> I'll let you have the last word. <laughs> I appreciate that. <laughs> let us pray. 
would you, would you all be in the spirit of prayer? I'm going to pray for these young women. So, and I'm, I'm going to pray the prayer that's, uh, that Paul wrote in Ephesians chapter 1. I pray that the God of our Lord Jesus Christ, the Father of glory, may give you, Caroline and Victoria, the spirit of wisdom and revelation as you come to know him, so that the eyes of your heart enlightened, you may know what is the hope to which he has called you, what are the riches of his glorious inheritance among the saints, and what is the immeasurable greatness of his power for those of us who believe according to the working of his great power. In Jesus' name, amen. Thanks for coming up.
So we take a moment to share our prayer, our joys, our thanks, our concerns. And so Melanie will bring the mic around if you have any to share, to raise your hand so she can at least see you. So. Ferris is watching the service at home. Uh, he hasn't been feeling well enough to come to church, and I'd like to ask for healing prayers. While she's walking around, let me uh, lift up to you. Um, we've been carrying on our health prayer list of Phyllis. Marco, you may have heard the last few weeks that she had gone into hospice care, where she did pass away and died this past week. So prayers for her family, Jenny Carr, and uh, the other members of her family. Lord, yeah. I'm asking for prayers for a good friend of mine. Her name is Beth. She has recently found out she's got, uh, it's a family thing. She's having problems. Um, assimilating protein in her body. So I'm asking for healing prayers for Beth. Lord, be our prayers. And then also prayers for uh, Nancy Saxton. Uh, she had a heart attack yesterday and uh, was in Mammoth and got uh, Medivac, and she's in Bakersfield Hospital and be having procedures uh, this morning. And so uh, prayers for her. Lord, Others. We want to keep in prayer the situation, of course, in Gaza. The fighting continues, and also in Ukraine. Um, prayers for those that are traveling this uh, Thanksgiving week. I know there are people who travel already, and others will be traveling more. And then, it's, uh, uh, depending on which school you're in, uh, some schools will be continuing this week. And Finishing up, others have stopped. So, prayers for all of that. So, I want prayers for my friend Debbie Pattis. She was, it's kind of confusing what happened, but she got caught in the reins of her horse. She wasn't on the horse, but her foot got, anyway, she ended up being dragged and flipped around, and she's having neck pain. Luckily, she had her helmet on because she was just getting ready to ride, but uh, just prayers that she's going to be okay. Lord, hear our prayers. So I have um, a couple of prayers. Um, there's a joy in our prayers in Malachi. Um, went to the doctor yesterday and passed a swallow test. And so now they can start introducing curing foods and everything and it's crawling all over the place and drinking all kinds of food left behind him. <laughs> and um, our daughter is also um, expecting another baby in February, and so just prayers that everything keeps going well for her and that she doesn't have um, the same issues and, and stuff that happened with her when she's pregnant with Malachi. And so far, everything's good. The baby's already larger than Malachi was when he was born. He's two pounds, so um, things are going well so far. Praise God, Lord, and hear our prayers. Others. Go to God. God, we're grateful for opportunities that come our way. I'm also grateful for challenges that may come our way, and we are able to lean into them and find them as opportunities to grow closer to you or to strengthen our faith. Lord, help us understand and know that uh, doubt is never a sin. And it's part of our struggle for faith. It's just, a, it's just part of what the journey is as we grow. And we all have it at different points and times in our life. And so let us be thankful for the ways that we grow in our faith. We lift up to you those persons we've had named uh, in our sharing or on our prayer list or others that we keep in our hearts who are dealing with significant health issues, who are awaiting tests, test results or in the process of 
of healing from past surgeries and procedures, and sometimes that drags on longer than the person in COVID. And so we give all of these to you, God, and just trust in your healing that we may be persistent and we may be faithful in our prayers for one another. We thank you for the joys that come our way, the, the joys of uh, new life to come, and the joys of uh, being able to make significant progress. Um, and so we lift up to you, Malachi, and give you thanks that we can do it swallowing, swallowing now and allowing to get food. And, and then for the new grandchild that is on the way. We lift up the situations around the world in which there are people whose basic prayer is perhaps help and they're struggling with things of safety and protection from violence, from war, for food and for water and for basic medical care. We thank you for people that in the face of danger step in and become rescuers and helpers. We thank you for your people of faith around the world that do so because they are motivated by your love, O Christ. Help us live with that same energy, compassion, and spirit in all that we do. In your name we pray as we pray your prayer. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Forgive us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thy is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory forever. Amen. e-giving for Vanco, or you can mail in an offering. And thank you for your gifts, both for the general support of the church and any special mission projects in that way. So uh, thank you this week for your offering. It's a thanks offering uh, to God. So uh, finances, prayers, time, uh, fellowship with one another. So we're grateful for all of those ways. Our closing hymn is Great is Thy Faithfulness. I invite you to stand as you're able and body your spirit. <laughs> Thank you. 
Lord, this week, may you know the deep peace, joy, and blessing of God in your bones and in your soul and in your spirit. In the name of the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Spirit.